Airbus's latest clean sheet widebody, the A350, is set to take off for first flight within days. Here in Toulouse, Frank Chapman, experimental test pilot for Airbus, talked to Aviation Week about the program. We've got the aircraft now with us over at uh, the flight test department and, uh, and we're preparing the aircraft for first flight as, uh, as we speak. So we are checking uh, a lot of the systems in terms of, uh, of, of aircraft systems but also the flight test uh, instrumentation and that's very important to us for the whole of the flight test program to make sure that we've got all the data we need to, uh, to analyse uh, post-flight. So currently the aircraft has just done its first uh, taxi tests yesterday uh, and uh, hopefully over the next couple of days it will start to increase taxi speed. We'll, uh, we've done the high power engine runs and we're certainly getting not that far from, uh, from first flight now. Uh, we're reasonably happy with, uh, with the aircraft, a little bit more work to do on the flight test instrumentation and then we should be ready to go. On the instrumentation side, making sure that the, 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 the uh, capture of the data uh, and, the, and the links from the, uh, the um, sensors themselves is linked to the, the, the stations, the, 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 the monitoring stations, both in the aircraft and the link through telemetry to the ground. It's still uncertain whether the A350 will perform a fly-past over Le Bourget during the Paris Air Show. That's difficult to say at this stage because it really depends how quickly we, uh, we manage to get the aeroplane into, uh, into first flight. Uh, obviously everybody would like to see it at Le Bourget, us included, we'd like to take it there, but it would be very dependent on what happens over the next uh, three to four days, I would suspect. When we start flying the aircraft, our, our first task really is to identify what we have in terms of, uh, of the aircraft itself in its brute form as it comes out of the, uh, the final assembly line. Uh, once we know what we have to start with, we can then modify it if necessary. Uh, we, uh, we'd like to freeze the aerodynamic configuration fairly early on so we can then work on handling qualities and, uh, and performance and get, uh, and, and get the actual figures that we're going to use at the end of the day uh, for, uh, for further development. Um, systems development is a, is a slower process and then as we run towards the end of the program we start to work with the authorities on the certification issues and certification testing uh, leading up to uh, the issue of the SIPE certificate. Okay, the first flight uh, really consists of um, a, a very middle of the envelope uh, exercise where we, uh, we, we take off in the, in the direct flight control laws with the higher order flight control uh, systems out, out of the equation, so flight control computers switched off, uh, and, uh, and once we get up to the uh, up to a medium altitude in our takeoff configuration, uh, we can then start to explore the handling characteristics, start to change configuration for the flaps, then the gear, and then we push the speed up slowly towards uh, our maximum normal operating speed, all the while taking an incremental approach to make sure we don't uh, don't have any surprises along the way. We do a little bit of investigation on the aeroelastic side to make sure. We're, we're, uh, our predictions are as, uh, as expected and, uh, and then once we're happy we will then start climbing up towards the high speed high, high mark number uh, end of the uh, flight envelope uh, and climbing up to level 430 which is the maximum, uh, the maximum uh, flight level for the aircraft. 